Georgia 06. Um, they are, I'm trying to get these live results as we go. The last look that I saw had um, the, the race extremely close uh, with John Ossoff with 51% and Karen Handel at 49%. And just previous, like five minutes before I looked, it was flipped. Uh, Karen Handel had 51% and John Ossoff had 49%. And so it's going to be a very close race. We'll give you uh, updates as we get it. This is the most expensive house race uh, in American history. Some estimates of nearly $50 million being spent on this single seat. Um, right now, at the moment, just got an update. The latest uh, results, 51% for Karen Handel, 48% for John Ossoff. Uh, and so this has been an expensive race, very expensive. The, Democrat, the Democratic Party has poured a lot of money into the 6th District, uh, and it's important to them that they flip it. Um, because it's been in the hands of the Republican Party uh, for almost 40 years. And in the midst of them um, being, this is also, again, this was held, as we said last night, this was a seat that was held by um, former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich. Uh, and most recently it was held by Tom Price, who has now moved into the Trump administration. But I just want to give you some numbers to show you what's been paid, uh, spent, uh, Ossoff, he, his campaign directly spent $14.2 million on airtime at radio, an air and radio advertisements. Um, and he spent another $8 million on other costs. Karen Handel spent $2.5 million on TV, radio, and cable spots, and $1 million on other expenses. But that's just the beginning. Combined with the candidates and outside groups, uh, they spent a total of $29.7 million on advertisements on television advertisements alone and this was to replace again uh, Secretary of uh, Human Services Tom Price uh, to replace his seat uh, this is just 29.7 million on television ads alone this is a slush fund this is a Christmas holiday for the uh, for the local news stations uh, political is reporting that uh, Atlanta NBC station had to bump reruns of the Andy Griffin show um, so that they can extend the news broadcast so that they can put advertisements for the campaign up. In, in other words, they booked the entire slot of available spaces for radio for television advertising because that's how much money was being spent in this race. They booked everything that was available and the only way they can make other things available is by getting rid of the Andy Griffin show. And you know, old people, they don't get to watch Andy Griffith. They, that, that's, that's a problem. But the money was so much. And here, here's another take from uh, Politico saying that uh, John Ossoff had so much money in his campaign that he was able to run Korean radio ads um, and offer free lift rides to voters on primary day. That's a lot of money. We'll get into the, the criticisms of whether or not this was, uh, so no, let's start here. This is not a scalable model. It's not. This, this, this is not going to be, you can't replicate this across the country. Every win for the Democratic Party cannot come at a cost of $23 million. It can't. It's, it's just not tenable. It's not tenable. You can't get that many donations. You can't spread it across all the congressional seats. Um, <clears throat> There are, that's one thing. The other thing about this that's important is that this is a strong Republican district. And so you have to ask yourself the question, what is the significance of this to the Democratic Party when they've turned a blind eye to other races, other races that were probably more winnable uh, in cheaper uh, marketing uh, markets, uh, cheaper television markets, and races that were not such a stronghold for the Republican Party, but yet they poured everything they possibly could. I mean, they threw, I, I mean, all the way down to free lift rides. They threw every dime they could into this race, and uh, we'll see if, it, if they are able to flip the six. Um, what we don't need are, what we do not need are these 
pride, um, sort of, what, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it, um, bragging rights. We, we, we don't need to win races for bragging rights. There's nothing more significant about this seat uh, other than the fact that they can pull it from a Republican, right? Uh, but there's nothing so significant about this seat um, as opposed to the previous races, special elections that the Democratic Party did not pour any money into. And so it does beg the question, why would the Democratic Party pour so much money into a race that they very possibly will lose by the end of the night? Uh, and even if they win, at what cost? And is it tenable? Is it something that we can replicate across the country? Um, we're going to get an um, update soon on the race. Uh, according to 538.com, the race is going to go late into the night, um, and it's very possible that the leads can switch um, going in. And again, it's, a, it's an interesting race. We do want to, um, a, a couple things that, um, that we didn't mention previously um, is the amount of support that she's getting from President Trump, Karen Handel is getting from President Trump. Now, he did not campaign for her directly. Um, and since he did not go into Georgia, the 6th District, to try to help her out, but he did send out a series of tweets uh, supporting her and attacking John Ossoff. Um, and I wanna bring those up. <clears throat> this is the first one. The Democrats want to stop tax cuts, good health care, and border security. Their Obamacare plan is dead uh, with 100% increases in um, P's, I'm not sure what P's is here. Uh, vote now for Karen H. Uh, premiums, okay, probably premiums, there you go. Uh, Democrat John Ossoff, um, who wants to raise your taxes to the highest level and is weak on crime and security, doesn't even live in the district. And this is the last tweet of support from Donald Trump. Karen Handel for Congress, she will fight for lower taxes, great health care, strong security, a hard worker who will never give up, vote today. Uh, remember Karen Handel last week or two weeks ago, she said that she does not believe in a livable wage. Uh, so, you know, political spin, political doublespeak is masterful. Um, she's going to fight for lower taxes. Sure. Okay. At what a cost, right? It, it, she's going to fight for lower taxes at the cost of a living wage. She does not believe that Americans are entitled to working a job and getting a livable wage. In other words, she wants you to be able to work 40 hours a week and still need to depend on food stamps. But, oh, don't forget, they're going to get rid of your food stamps, too. That's Karen Handel, and that's who Donald Trump is supporting. No surprise there, um, but the race is still close, 53% to 47. Uh, Handel actually is spreading. The margin is spreading, so it's very possible that, uh, that she's going to win, probable that she's going to win at this point. And um, it's uh, $22 million sunk into this race from the Democratic Party.